Hey guys, it's Emma, and I am back today for you guys with Cleopatra's Moon by Vicki Alvier Schechter. This is a historical fiction book, and it's about 330 pages. It's a, it's a fairly good sized book. Um, it I do believe it is for younger audiences. However, it is still one of my favorite genres, so I had to read this and pick this up. Today, I'm going to be giving a non-spoilery review. I'm gonna try my hand at it. And I have some talking points down just for things that I thought were interesting about the book, things that I thought you guys might look forward to. So without any messing around, let's get right to it. First of all, I got this book in like middle school. I got this book in, I wanna say, eighth grade at my middle school's book fair. At my book fair. Do you guys remember when we had those? I don't know if they still have them, but I would go ham at the book fair. And I remember I bought Cleopatra's Moon along with Curses and Smoke, both by Vicki Alvier Schechter. This book Schechter. is a historical fiction novel, like I said many times, about Cleopatra Selene, the daughter of Cleopatra the Seventh, and General Marcus Antonius of Rome. We all know how that story ended up. We all know th that Mark Antony was killed in battle um, or he committed suicide. There are many different ways to say how he died. Um, but the surefire manner of how Cleopatra died, she put an Egyptian asp to her chest and she killed herself by, by having the snake bite her. And that was how Cleopatra died. She and Julius Caesar were a thing, and then Julius Caesar died, and then she had a thing and married Mark Antony. Then I personally knew that um, Cleopatra and Julius Caesar had had a son, Caesarian, meaning little Caesar. However, I did not know that Mark Antony and Cleopatra had children. And this book centers on Cleopatra and Mark Antony's daughter, Cleopatra Selene, or Cleopatra Selene the Eighth, I believe. So basically the synopsis of this of this is, it follows um, Mark Antony and Cleopatra's family, i.e. Caesarian, uh, Cleopatra Selene, her twin brother Alexandros, Helios, and then their younger brother Ptolemy Philadelphos, I believe. It follows their life while Octavianus has declared war on Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Mostly on Cleopatra for, first of all, stealing Julius Caesar away from Rome, and now stealing Mark Antony away from Rome, who was a famous general at the time. Octavianus comes, Mark Antony dies, Cleopatra dies, leaving her four children alone. Caesarian is sent away in order because he's the heir of the throne of Egypt and he's sent away in order to go somewhere else to be safe. Meanwhile, Selene and her two younger brothers are sent to Rome in order to be raised in Octavianus's house by his wife. And it's all about Selene trying to get her brothers and herself back to Egypt in order to, you know, reclaim her title and her throne. I did like Cleopatra Selene. I felt that she was a very, very strong female character, especially when she had to be back then. But sometimes I did feel like she was very headstrong. She um, didn't really know what secrecy was. And it would be with like Alexandros and she'd be arguing with him about going back to Egypt and she'd be yelling at him in the daytime while everybody else was around her, she would be yelling at Alexandros, don't you want to go back to Egypt? Don't you want to reclaim the title like the goddess Isis wants us to do? And I'd just be sitting there thinking, Cleopatra, girl, you are in your enemy's household, i.e. the enemy that hated your mother, has ransacked Egypt, why are you talking so loudly? Throughout the book, they do say some Latin and Egyptian words, which I thought was very interesting. For example, on page two, the gods would take pity and protect him so that his ka, his soul, I don't know Egyptian, I'm just going by what the book is saying and I'm inferring that his ka is in fact his soul. But 
Egyptian and Latin words like that that would just be used on the regular. It, they would be implanted into the liter into the book, and then they would be explained maybe one or two words afterwards, like what like what the word meant. And I thought that was very, very educational. I liked it because not only are you absorbing literature, but you're absorbing a little bits of the languages, and it helps you delve into the story more. And then not only that, it also had a character list at the beginning, which helped me so much because back then, as it's explained in here, the daughters in Rome would take the name of their father. So, for example, there are two Marcellas and there are two Antonias. And the only way that you could really even differentiate between any of them in those two sets would be Marcella the Elder and Marcella the Younger, and then Antonia the Elder and Antonia the Younger. The family tree was so intricate and complex because you had so many divorcees, you had people remarrying each other and people adopting each other's kids and then having more kids, and it was just a big mess. Basically, Everybody's related to everybody. And then the epilogue, I guess, which is technically an author's note, it basically wraps up the end of the story without having to, without having to hurriedly end the story with a happy ending because it's history. Normally history doesn't have a happy ending. It gave the story a historical ending, a factual ending. Not to mention, there are f like historical facts at the very end as well. The facts within the fiction is what she calls it, and then it's just general history, general historic facts about each of the characters, you know, that were factual and real. Two things that I can tell you about the book that I did really like, without spoiling you guys, was one, the plot twist. The plot, there is a plot twist in this book, and it's toward the very end. With this plot twist, I was 50-50 with it. I thought what was gonna happen was gonna happen, and then again I was like, do I really think that's what's gonna happen? Is that really what's gonna, what's about to go down? Then also there's a recurring theme in this book that is basically free will versus God's will. And Celine often battles with this because she has to deal with, you know, her mother's suicide, also her dad's suicide, because in this book, Mark Antony kills himself. Celine has to deal with that, especially with the death of her mother, because she revered her mother. She admired her mother to no end. And she never really got over the fact that she felt her mother abandoned her and her siblings. Throughout the book, she'd been trying to differentiate between God's will and free will, because that was something that she had learned as a child, but she never really understood the difference. She, her main question was, how could you have free will if God's will is for you to obey? And at the very end of the book, she finds her answer to that question. And I thought it was very philosophical for a book made for this age. I, for one, am not that interested in, philoso in philosophy or deep thinking questions because girl, the bitch don't got time for that. And I just really applaud Vicky Alvier Schechter for how well it was resolved and how well it was thread in there because it wasn't preachy. So that was Cleopatra's Moon by Vicky Alvier Schechter. Um, like I said, I would definitely recommend this book. Recommend this book. Um, my only thing is I do have, there would be some trigger warnings in case you do not like to read about suicide because suicide is a prominent thing in this book just because both of her parents died by suicide and just because of the cultural aspects back then so i would keep that in mind before you read this book however if that doesn't bother you or if you are a history nerd like me and you completely love historical fiction then i would very much recommend this book i give this book four stars you can tell that it was written for a younger audience, but it does have some mature content, which I do feel like the two meshed very well together. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, I will see you guys next time I post a video. Bye!